Do you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, many time guest, the Chief Growth Officer of Universal Prop Tech, Frank Carnival. How are you doing today, Frank? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So, big news today. Why don't we talk about it? And you can tell us a little bit about what is happening right now with ISBRG and Spotlight 19. Yeah, um, great day. Uh, long day. Uh, wanted to get all the details right. So, you know, I think you recall, I said it on your show a while back that we were really excited about, we knew, you know, our partners, we knew what was about to happen and we were waiting for this moment. This is one of many moments. And so finally we reached a point where uh, Iceberg has announced today that they're in clinical trial. That's, wow. that's, that's important. So they're in clinical trial. Um, uh, part of the clinical trials are taking place in a Canadian uh, border location or Canadian uh, crossing location. I can't remember the, uh, that's the, that's what we're using, Canadian border location. So that's uh, the key. Um, and uh, we have IRAP, so National Research Council of Canada uh, has granted some uh, money, industrial assistance funds for this clinical trial. Wow. So we're really excited. We knew this was coming. Uh, we had to wait, obviously, that's the, the challenge of being a publicly traded company and investing uh, a stake, a minority stake in a, a private company. We have to wait till everyone is ready for various announcements. So that's what took a while. There's other things that took a while, but we're excited. We're in clinical trial. Uh, I know everyone on the team's excited at Iceberg. Uh, we've been quite supportive along the way. So, you know, we're that, that's what a lot of this was about. It was making sure we got that news out. So again, we're pretty excited. Uh, other details, um, Iceberg also announced uh, two new advisors have joined their advisory board. A great pedigree from uh, Siemens globally and uh, PepsiCo, so they're bringing in some good expertise to help uh, help the business grow uh, post commercialization. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. It's a big step for the company, and our community has been really excited. They were watching the bids today stack up, and it was looking really, really good. And they're like, "When's it going to go live? When's it going to go live?" And they were watching it all day long, and we're just so yeah. excited to see this finally go live. So very exciting to see. Yeah, the- it's it is it's it's challenging having a lot of partners who aren't publicly traded, and so you deal with a whole new layer of complexity that you know we we just don't have right we have disclosure we have certain requirements but you know it's it's uh it's interesting to say the least and, and we're obviously the small fish in this big pond, big pond but uh really excited to, to get this news out today so let's explain a little bit to the community that's watching sure. what is the significance of starting clinical trials so clinical trial is is critical so one of the pieces leading up to this that i, I don't think originally we expected we had to do was we had to get a Health Canada ITA, a um, it's really, I think, the proper terminology, an investigational testing authorization, right? So when you put your hand on the actual device that can scan, uh, again, to remind people, we can scan uh, someone's finger, you put your hand over it, it scans it within several seconds, and it's able to read your analytes, assess them, uh, and we teach it through machine learning to identify who is COVID positive and who's COVID negative to make that determination. So all of this is pending um, the clinical trials and, and pending Health Canada approval. Um, so we had to get through that ITA process. Got through that, took a little bit longer than we had liked, but we got through that. Uh, and it was just setting up this clinical trial start. So there's two phases to it. Uh, Iceberg will put up more information when they're able to, but we're in that first stage of it, where again, we're teaching, we said this in the past, um, it is learning from scans that are done on, on you know, people scans are taking place is being compared against PCR uh, scans and PCR tests um, to teach it what is positive, what is negative. And it will build up from there. And, and you know, in, in the short term, we will figure out uh, how, uh, it, you know, what, what Duncan's working on, the CEO of Iceberg is to, to that, refine that specificity, right? To really calibrate it so that it knows, yep, we're pretty confident it's gonna say yes or no uh, pro, you know, properly and accordingly. So we're, we're kind of excited. We're in that first stage and that is a very critical stage. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. That's really exciting to see you guys evolve. I remember when we first started talking and, you know, we've been doing this quite a bit and our investors and our community got really excited. Stock went up like crazy. We've started when it was around 20 cents, went to like around 70 and the yeah. stock came back down and gave a lot of investors an opportunity to get in again, to be quite frank. So a lot of our investors yeah. have con- kind of come back in at these lower levels and to see the this news now, I think they're going to be very excited. Now, what does this mean for investors? Yeah, so I think for investors, we're certainly one step closer to having a, you know, again, we can't say one way or another uh, what Health Canada will do with it in the end, but we're one step closer to having a commercialized product. Wow. So from that perspective, it's significant. Um, Huge. I, I would just say, you know, it's one of those things where we understood when we did our due diligence, that, that sort of expected time frame, which, uh, you know, again, there's certain expectations on some things were longer and other things we think are, are, are going to be quicker. So it just sort of works out in the wash. We're still excited uh, that we will have a, a solution that pending approval will still be quite relevant if you're paying attention to what's happening from a COVID perspective, will still be quite relevant. And look, in the last few days alone, you really pay attention to where the governments are going, even in this country, in Canada, and the United States for that matter, it's rapid testing. Absolutely. Rapid testing is that next layer of, if we're not achieving herd immunity, then what are you gonna have in place to make sure that people are still safe uh, going into facilities, building schools, campuses, it will be rapid testing. So we're still on a good time frame to be relevant for that. What is, you mentioned the Canadian border location. What is that all about? Um, well, you know, so it's, so I guess there, there'd be a few without giving away exactly where, um, there, you, know, you can imagine to leave this country, there's only a few places you can leave this country from. So yeah. uh, from that context, it's important to know, just as we don't want people coming into this country without doing tests and being processed accordingly uh, for COVID perspective, we're also doing the same thing for people leaving. So um, I think the relevance is we're not in a mall, we're not in a sort of a, a rather small location, we're in a significant location that's obviously processing people. And and it's it's the issue of the day, every day, people wondering, how are people getting in? We know too many people can't get out of this country but clearly people can get into it. So uh, the relevance is making sure we found locations that uh, you get a significant diversity of testing subjects. And, and that's going to be obviously critical to having the right solution in the end. So that's, that's definitely the relevance. It's, uh, it's not a very homogeneous group. You're going to get all kinds of people uh, being tested. And we're quite excited about that. Why did it take so long to announce these updates? So um, great question. I think with a lot of our investors, you know, some are more active than others and texting and reaching out and making comments and statements. You know, we do our best to try to respond and reach out to as many of them as possible when they ask these questions. Um, you know, we're, we're a bit of a victim of our own success, right? So we have a company that since the last time we talked, you know, we, we are debt free, uh, you know, have, have a solid, we're certainly more profitable than we were the previous year, um, have a solid foundation uh, you know, spending more money, resources, and growing our business and, and really, you know, bringing in more products, more solutions. So exciting. That part of the story is quite exciting. And then we did this with Iceberg. And this is in a very exciting story. And I think a combination of since the last time we've come out, people really just want to hear about Iceberg. <laughs> and I get it. That's yeah, very yeah, sexy I, and exciting. <laughs> um, and so, you know, there's other things that we're doing, obviously. So I think it's a combination of you know, again, it's trying to get messaging, trying to get uh, information out. And so it's difficult when we're not com- in complete control of that. And that's fine. Okay. That's just how it works when you make minority investments. Um, so there's a lot of coordination with a lot of organizations and, and much larger organizations. So that's a bit of that delay. And I think the second part of that is really, as I said earlier, you know, the Health Canada ITA, and, and don't want to get into too much of that. It was just something that I think we didn't assume early on that that was something we had to do and that's something we did have to do and it was something that got extended a little bit longer than than we expected so that combination really added to the length of time certainly the last time I spoke to you we didn't expect to have to do these things um and and that's really the extent of that I think going forward you know certainly from a company perspective we have so many exciting things we're doing within our our day-to-day business that I think we've learned we'd really have to 
you know, really demonstrate to people, here's what we're doing. Here's the singles and doubles we do all day long. And we have some other news will come out on that uh, in the near future, but it, it is exciting what we do day to day. Um, and I think we have to match that um, in general and make sure people hear all the stories and all the narratives of what we're up to, as opposed to just the iceberg one. But I do get why iceberg is exciting. It is, it is pretty relevant today. We have a lot of long-term investors that are just buy and hold type guys. And um, to be quite honest with you, I feel like you guys have moved very quickly. I think investors are impatient. You know, they want results. Really, really, Rich. I will say this, Rich. I, I will say yeah. this for a lot of those people as well, is that uh, it, it's, you know, I've, I've been in business for over 20 years, developing different projects and things. And so, you know, in, from the investor community, they might not know me from Adam. And so I do understand that. And so we have to earn that type of respect and, uh, and earn that appreciation that if I say we're working on something and things are going to happen, I'm not lying about it. It's just there's things that, you know, the ingredients are going to having a, a successful uh, project, a successful investment. So, um, you know, I think there's just a whole, as you pointed out, I think long-term investors understand, okay, things don't happen that fast, but yet That's things right. are happening fast. And yeah. so it's just really yeah. trying to satisfy the appetite of many investors. But again, I think we're doing it. Uh, we'll, we'll probably share much more of our singles and doubles than just the home runs. Um, so we'll look for that, I think, going forward. But, uh, you know, I, next week I'm speaking at a Q2 Investor Summit. Yes. And we'll have, yes. obviously, you know, uh, information like this to share uh, and, and bring people up to date and really answer all the investor questions as much as I can. I think I'm booked for two days worth of questions. So wow. pretty excited. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to thank you for that because we do have members that reach out to you and they always love the fact that you respond to them, whether it's on Twitter, email, yeah. Instagram. So yeah, I, I think hey, they're our backbone. I mean, you know, I worry about and tell them all the time in, in my responses. We worry about customers, we worry about our staff, and we worry about investors. You need to worry about all three of them fairly evenly because can I just do one? You're in trouble with the others. So absolutely, I appreciate when people reach out. I do my best to respond when I can. Uh, and obviously, sometimes are trickier than other times. Now, you mentioned it a little bit, the singles and doubles. So yeah. do you guys have any irons in the fire that are not iceberg related? That yes. Could draw <laughs> Perfect. That can catapult revenue and future growth. I think I know that's a question. Yeah, that a lot I mean, of our that's, investors have. you know, there, there is. I think, you know, it's a really great question because um, we spent that sort of first quarter, I mean, at least when I came in, it's been just under a quarter of bringing in new products, bringing in new solutions and trying to embed them within our operations and go out and, and sell and, you know, sell it and market it and generate that. So there's a bit of, we loaded up the deck with some great air purification technologies uh, and, and all those are underway. There's communications with them. There's proposals we've been making. So they're all part of what we're trying to do going forward, right? So it's, you know, we, we make investments, we integrate, we scale and repeat. That's literally what we have on our investor deck. And so we, we bring in some, a batch of solutions. We look at how best to, to make them part of our solution set going forward, you know, and we get some success, we do it again. So I think that first stage of indoor air quality is pretty much through. There's a lot in there that we've played with. There could be some more stuff. Um, there's a whole slew of building performance, you know, more artificial intelligence technologies. Absolutely. We, we've talked about in the past way more to happen uh, and way more on the energy resources group uh, where, uh, you know, from investments, it could be anywhere from investments to acquisitions to strategic partnerships. Absolutely. There's a whole slew of them and it's just a sequence and a method to our madness. And uh, I don't, we're definitely not stopping on iceberg. So Great. many more things to come. Now, speaking on that, Let's just say Spotlight 19 doesn't pass clinical trials. Can Spotlight 19 still be used by private companies? Um, you know, it's a good question. So um, I, I don't know all the details, but so when you're done and you brought your, your testing, your clinical trials, and you've done your two stages and you bring them for final approval, um, think of it as there's an efficacy level of what you can achieve, right? So again, at the end of the first stage, if you didn't have a solution that had a very good specificity that you were very comfortable with to then say, let's lock it up and now run it through our second phase trial, why would you lock it up and put it through your second phase trial, right? So there's a certain confidence of it's doing what we think it's, you know, it's supposed to do and we lock it up and we, and we submit it for that second phase. The second phase in the end is really more about 
uh, in the end, determining are you, I think it's a level one product or are you level two? Level one would be say it's more for, uh, you know, true diagnostics, true, you know, I can determine in a hospital and somewhere that this can detect COVID and this is that final line, or is it a sort of level two where it can be used in private businesses in places where like arenas and, and other places where it's used to prevent access. And it's sort of a triage effect where, yeah, you can't get access. And depending on, on what level it's approved at, uh, okay, you don't get access now, go do that PCR test if you wanted really to get access because we see you're positive. So um, there are different stages of it. You know, I think from my perspective in the way that we looked at this, we made the investment. It's not, uh, is it going to work? Or, or not, it's how well will it work? And then let the market uh, market play out based on what those approvals are, right? So it, you're, you're absolutely right. Can it be used in different fashions or different, can it be sold and licensed to people? It probably could. And I think once approvals are achieved, you can then determine how best to, to take advantage of whatever level that it's, it, it has secured. So we'll let Duncan, the CEO of Iceberg, continue to manage that he's, he's doing a great job he's got a great team in there to to ensure that this is a great technology that there's no shortcuts taken i guarantee that um he's very uh um you know he just he, he takes his time and he does it right and there's no cutting corners here so we're very excited about that if there's one thing that you want investors to know about today before we say goodbye what would it be um you know, I, I think everything I said it was, it is, and as additional information can come out, they can understand. Uh, we were extremely positive from day one because we understood and still understand who all the partners are and who's involved in this and, and the credibility they all bring. That hasn't gone away. That's still there. And today is a snapshot of, of some of that credibility. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no, no one can say to me that, well, is this product, product really going to work? Uh, when you can secure a Canadian border location. That just doesn't happen if you're a fly-by-night. So we're very excited. You know, it's very credible. Uh, and honestly, Chris and I, our CEO, we just, uh, we can't wait for all the information to come out in due course. Um, but we just want investors to know we, we are very serious about this. We continue to be serious and excited uh, and very bullish on the technology and, uh, you know, continue to look for our, uh, our notes, our updates, and uh, and follow along. Wow, super excited to see it unfold. Thank you for joining us today again, Frank. Oh, my pleasure, Rich. Thank you. And guys, remember, before you invest in anything, please do your due diligence, do your research. Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. If you like the video, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. I'm going to be honest with you, Frank. UPI has become one of my favorite companies. You guys, you mentioned it. No debt. And that is huge for our community and our investors. Baby market cap, tight share structure, growing revenue, strong management team. I'm really impressed with what you guys are doing, Frank. Thank you for being a part of a, a great company and bringing this to our community. Love to invite you back on our show anytime you have any big breaking news like this today. Thank yeah. you for bringing the news here to Rich TV Live. The Chief Growth Officer of Universal Prop Tech, Frank Carnival. Have a great day, everybody. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Have a nice day, everyone.